Hey guys, I'm Hop, TFB TV's second string shaky cam operator. Back in September, the TFB crew was down in Refugio, Texas at Bridal Iron South to play around with a bunch of stuff from Crimson Trace and ATN Corp. We were there for a few days and a few nights, and I ended up doing a lot of low-light shooting with the Crimson Trace Railmaster Pros, which is their series of white light and visible laser combination units. We had three different units to play with, which I think represents the entire lineup of the Railmaster Pros. The CMR-205, which is for compact pistols, the CMR-207, which is for full-size pistols, and the CMR-301, which is for long guns. That's the most interesting one to me. The two pistol lights are pretty standard. The CMR-301, however, is a little bit more advanced. It can be mounted on M-Lock or 1913 rails using two included adapter plates. It's powered by a single rechargeable 18350 battery, which is kind of neat. It has a fire button on the unit itself, and it also includes a remote switch. The 205 and the 207 both behave like pretty typical pistol light laser combinations. On both of those units, the modes are slaved, so you always get the white light and the laser at the same time. The CMR301 also has a rotary switch on the back that can switch it between off, laser only, light only, or combination mode. The differences between the 205 and 207 are predominantly in the form factor and the brightness level, although it's worth pointing out that the 207 has a momentary mode. If you hold the button down for a few seconds, when you release it, it will turn itself back off again. The 205 doesn't. No matter how long you press or hold that button, it's going to stay on until you press or hold it again. The CMR301 has a 1000 lumen white light and a 5 milliwatt green laser. The white light illuminator is impressively bright, but it is more of a flood illuminator than a spot illuminator. As a result, it's not exactly the best pick for a long gun. I think it works best on a short AR or a sub gun or PCC of some kind. Within 100 yards, the white light was more than capable of illuminating targets. After about 100 yards or so, the effectiveness of the white light illuminator fell off drastically. There are a lot of rifle-specific lights out there that don't produce nearly a thousand lumens, but they can still throw much farther than this at the cost of flood illumination. So the 301 is probably more suited to home defense or close quarters use, which are probably the scenarios you would be using a visible light and laser combination in the first place. These units all have civilian legal lasers, which means the visible laser component can be no more powerful than 5 milliwatts. Lasers are regulated in the United States by the Food and Drug Administration, because I guess they assume the average American eats lasers and shits dynamite. A 5 milliwatt civilian legal visible laser can get you quite a lot of distance at night, but it isn't powerful enough to be used in direct sunlight. I found that the green lasers on all three of these units were bright enough that they didn't get washed out by the paired white light. If you're in a situation where you've already committed to pumping out white light, you may as well throw a visible laser in there. You're not really adding to your downrange signature. Aiming with a laser is not appreciably slower than aiming with your optic, assuming you do a little bit of practice first. Keeping the gun low and aiming with a visible laser gives you total situational awareness, which is potentially good for CQB or home defense. There are a few things to keep in mind here. For the pistol lights, one thing you'll have to think about is holster compatibility. A lot of light-bearing holsters for full-size pistols function essentially like a gun bucket. Safariland ALS holsters, for example, index off of the ejection port of whatever gun you put in them. The space for the weapon light is just a big empty hole, so almost any light system will work, provided it's under a certain size. That's not the case for almost any concealed carry holster, though. So if you wanted to use the CMR205 or 207 on a carry gun, you would have to track down the right holster. Since these light laser combos are not super well established on the market, that could be a little bit difficult. If you're putting it on a handgun exclusively for home defense, it's not really an issue. Shit. Buddy mag system. Oh shit, buddy mag. Another thing to keep in mind is the usefulness of a momentary mode for light discipline. You don't really want to leave your light blasting while you wander around. For my money, that's less important on a pistol light or laser than it is on a rifle light or laser. That being said, the momentary mode on the 207 is a nice feature, and I don't see any reason why they couldn't put that on the 205 as well. The CMR301 does have a momentary mode, regardless of if you're using the built-in fire button or the remote switch kit. We did a bunch of shooting in the steel target bays down at Bridal Iron South with all three of these lights. I had the 301, the rifle unit, mounted to a Smith & Wesson M&P 15 Tactical. The other units we tested out on Luke's SIG 320X Carry Legion. I dragged the Smith around pretty hard for three days, and it was looking scuffed up at the end of it, but it's still working just fine. I did accidentally tear the rubber fire button part of the way off the back of the unit, which seems like a potential weak point, although it does still work. Visible lasers are definitely relegated to a somewhat niche application. They can come in quite handy for low-light, close-quarter shooting that you're already intending to use white light for. 
I actually do like to have a visible laser on my home defense gun, because if I wake up in the middle of the night without my contact lenses in, there's just no way I'll be able to use iron sights. I trust none of you will take advantage of that information. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. TFB TV is supported by our sponsors Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply. We are also supported directly by our viewers via Subscribestar and Patreon. You can find links to both of those in the video description. Please check out our sponsors, we really appreciate their support. Please also check out Patreon or Subscribestar, pick your poison. Either way, you'll be automatically entered to win a whole bunch of cool giveaways, which James puts together because he loves you. See you next time.